Well, standing by to continue the conversation, former director of special operations with the DEA, Derek Maltz, and president of the London Center for Policy Research, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer. Uh, Tony, all right, look, you yeah. were just there. Didn't you just, like, Literally. go right across that exact same bridge like, a couple hours ago? So I was not quite, 36 hours ago, but yes, well, I'm actually in Montreal this moment. And Sorry. what's interesting, Carl, is that, uh, yeah, there was heightened uh, uh, border uh, protection folks present there. Actually, we, we walked around the night before, looked at the falls. It's a great place. People should visit. But beyond that, they do have enhanced security. When I was on the Canadian side, the Canadian Guard said something about a countermeasure that they had was, were using, which uh, I don't want to get into. It, give, it would give away kind of how they're doing things. But suffice it to say, the border itself, mm -hmm. I felt pretty confident that they know what they're doing. But to that point, Carl, it's 5,500 miles a lot of that is water. So it's a very difficult challenge to take on. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, frankly, the, the, the bad guys are learning a lot about this incident because obviously we're showing how the border is protected in certain hard parts. My, my concern is those pieces, places of the border which are not well protected, and I think that's what may be challenged next. Yeah, Derek, there are, but there are so many migrants out there that are coming across in so many places. It's like they're bound to find the weakness, and then just like if you go to a, a Western Union, they communicate back to the people from the place they came from. They have to know this better than probably the border agents, no? Of course. I mean, they make billions of dollars because they exploit weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And right now... We have historic fentanyl deaths, historic seizures by law enforcement of fentanyl, historic profits of the Mexican cartels, historic cartel-controlled human smuggling and sex trafficking operations, historic illegals entering the country, historic bills for all the legal and law-abiding citizens. But here's my issue. All the unknowns, including all these Chinese military-aged men that are now all over this country setting up marijuana grow operations getting these compounds, like in Maine, Oklahoma, Colorado, California, and they're actually coming in at record levels. Yeah. What are we doing? You know, it's, it's, it's crazy. You brought up that Maine thing. We talked about it yesterday. And they're finding um, cigarettes that are generally almost, o almost exclusively smoked by Chinese military officials. They're finding them all over the ground in certain areas in Maine. So it's like, what the heck is going on there? I want to change over to the DOD, though, Tony. The chief of staff yeah. for the Department of Defense schools in the United States was arrested last week on suspicion of soliciting a prostitute during a human trafficking sting. Uh, what the heck is going on here? So there's a quiet undercurrent of kind of knowledge of this, Carl, that DOD, certain DOD folks, private <sighs> security enterprises, groups which are actually engaged in rescuing uh, the children, sex uh, trafficked children, are all part of the game. They actually are fronts. So this is only the tip of the iceberg. There's something called brownstoning. This came up recently in a prostitution ring, Carl, that was just busted. They take these girls from the people, guys like this, they recruit them, they put them in play, they get a senior official, a senior uh, diplomat, someone in bed with an underage girl called brownstoning, and they own you. So this is this is a huge problem that people do not fully understand exists. I'm glad it's finally coming to light, but this is simply the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, wow, shocker. Uh, but Derek, uh, Eric Adams, uh, this guy, he's up to his ears in hot water and other things, but he's slashing budgets left and right now, calling Biden's illegal migration inflow, quote, unfair to taxpayers. It's like, this is the same guy who a year ago or so was like, yeah, we're proud to be a sanctuary city. At some point, they just got to vote these people out. Right, so call elections have serious consequences. Not only do we see that in New York, but we see that around America now because every city is a border city. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Mayor, Mayor Adams said something that I picked up on. He said that, you know, the influx of migrants would destroy New York City. That's true, but it's going to destroy America, and that's happening every day, Call. Yeah. Well, New York yep. City isn't any different from, you know, Oklahoma or Kentucky, any city there. It's, uh, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy. But, Tony, we, we look at this from a security standpoint. Forget the yeah. border and terrorists coming through and all the known godaways that we don't know and the Chinese people farming weed up in Maine. But let's just talk about the general likelihood to commit crime. When you have this many people willing, as their first act into this country, is to break the law, to come here illegally, these people are having serious run-ins with the law. We have, you know, angel moms and dads that have lost children, not only to fentanyl, 
fentanyl, but to a number of other crimes that have been committed by people who shouldn't have been here in the first place. So Tom Homan speaks very eloquently about this. The actual illegal communities are most victimized by the Democrat Party by permitting this happen. Because yeah. what happens? Cartels take over. They own the process. You become indentured servant. You either sell yourself by making money to send back to the cartel or sell your body. Sure. These things are terrible. And the crime itself is basically an incentive to actually have people come here and, and, and do horrific crimes against the very community they live in. So this is not a good thing. And to the point, the, the point you're trying to make here regarding that adding to the insecurity of the country, look, fentanyl. Fentanyl yeah. is a weapon of mass destruction that they're, they're very happy to criminally bring across the border and use that comes from China. It's directly related. Yeah. It's directly related to the, to the growth of marijuana in Maine. It's all about the bad guys figuring out how to use the criminal system mm -hmm. as, an, as, a, as an enabler and expansion of their strategic efforts to undermine our country. Yeah. It's all related, Carl. It's all linked. Yeah, well, and hopefully someone, someone will get elected that will figure this out. Derek Moltz, Lieutenant Colonel Schaefer, appreciate you both being here. Thank you. Thanks, Carl. All right.